OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Good morning, everyone. Um, I know you cannot reply back to me, but I would accept it that you just said good morning to me. And I hope everyone is um, ready to learn a new topic called, well, it's not a new topic for you, but it is you know, um, uh, something that you've been using a day in and day out or several times a day. Um, it's called Outlook, Microsoft Outlook. So let me go ahead and close the chat here and click share screen. So we are going to get started with Microsoft Outlook. And <clears throat> it's not Miss Outlook, but this is Microsoft Outlook on the web. Please, I want to make sure that there are two types of Microsoft Outlook. One is, uh, it's not two types, but two platforms. One is desktop version, which has a lot more features and um, flexibility. And, but that doesn't mean Outlook on the web is not, but Outlook on the web is also catching up and it is really decent, way more decent. I mean, way more decent than I have when I first started using it, a lot more features and a lot more tools that we will need for, um, you know, for our daily day-to-day um, uh, -day use, especially with our school and our organizations and districts. So without further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Farzana Kasim. If you attended my workshop last Tuesday, some of you may already know me. My name is Farzana Kasim, but those of you who have not seen me or know, know, do, uh, who have not um, attended any of my workshop. I work at Evans Community Adult School. I am a tech advisor at Evans and um, I, Evans is part of the Los Angeles Unified School District. So let's go. Um, Melinda, I want to make sure that you can see my PowerPoint slide, correct? Yes. MS, okay. yes. MS okay. Outlook on the web. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. And so today's web, um, webinar um, just like Melinda mentioned, I want to um, uh, repeat again, it is not, you know, 100% fully uh, uh, hands-on workshop, but I have uh, some hands-on um, included in the slide. So we're going to go back and forth. This is how it's going to happen. I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Then I'm going to have a little um, uh, uh, um, area where it would say, let's try that. What it means is that you and I will, if you, of course, if you want to follow along, we will go to the live demo page, live Outlook page, and then we're going to take a look at them. All right. So this webinar will cover what is Outlook. I know you all know what is Outlook, but let's go in a little bit deeper to find out what Outlook can do. Different ways for, um, for you to sign in and we will take a tour of the Outlook. Those of you who have been using email all the time, you know, the district, your school, your, your organization, whatever it is that you have to, you are, you are asked to use this Outlook um, to reply email and to send email and to send attachments and so on. I know you have been using it, but have we taken time to take a look at all the things, the tools, the features that, that Outlook offers? The truth to be told, I am learning seriously. Oh, Almost every other day, I am getting new stuff every other day, and I am still learning about this outlook on the web. It's not about learning. It is about the new features are added. So it means, you know, if it is a new feature, then you take a look at it. So this is what we're going to do. We will take time today. Today's work is the time you take a look at your outlook that you've been using email and reply emails and so on. That is the reason I have this basic tour of the Outlook on the web. We will go ahead and um, I will show you how to organize and manage your messages. And, and I was first going to have it as organize and manage your messages, but I wanted to um, sort of excite you with some of the great features because I am so excited about little tiny tools. Uh, you can definitely check them out on your own. Lastly, we are going to take a look at manage your calendar and context because Outlook has meant calendar and context and then to-do list included. So what is Outlook? This is your Outlook, the email that you may, or it may look the same, just to let you know. If it, if it doesn't look the same, either it is uh, your, your 
organization, your school, your, um, you know, uh, uh, or district um, may have changed certain settings, but it should be very similar. Those of you who are joining from um, personal accounts such as hotmail.com, outlook.com, live.com, or some other.com, you may or may not have exact same one, but you should have a very similar screen as mine. Please remember what I'm sharing is LAUSD version of Microsoft Outlook. It is almost the same with all of all the other districts. So what is Outlook? Outlook is an email client by Microsoft. It allows you to access and manage, right? Because it allows you to access your email and it allows you to move your email, delete your email, do stuff, whatever it is, right? Um, uh, regarding your emails and calendars and contacts and tasks. It allows you to upload and share files from your local computer. So just like you attach email um, files, folders, photos, uh, videos, and all kinds of audios, whatever it is that you want to attach for your um, sometimes agenda and stuff like that, right? So you can get it from your computer, local computer, or your OneDrive, or those of you who are using tablets, you can, you also have my files under your files, you are allowed to, you know, um, upload and share all these things, all these um, uh, to your Outlook various ways to sign into OneDrive. Those of you who attended my workshop last Tuesday definitely know how to log in. But those of you who are joining me today, and I thank you first of all that you're joining, you have um, several ways to um, sign in. Sign into, uh, it should be one Outlook. I mistakenly used the word OneDrive over here. So I would like you to disregard this word and change it to Outlook. So that's what it is. Um, I apologize for that. So in order to log into your school um, or your organization, and I know you already know how to log into your email account, but do not think that is the only way for you to log into your um, email to, to get to Outlook. There are a few more ways that you can um, log in. So the second way would be you can go straight to Outlook.com, signing with your district um, account, your school account, your organization account, whatever it is, right? For Evans, uh, for LAUSD, we use mailbox.lausd.net. So just know that each district has its own um, web link. So you can also go via um, office.com. This is the signing um, a page that you will see, of course, they will always change. So, but at least I'm giving you um, a screenshot of each one. Those of you who would like to join with me, follow along um, uh, for the rest of the slides. Now is the time for you to go ahead and open your Chrome browser. I like to use Chrome browser um, because my district apps are all uh, pretty much, you know, compatible with our uh, with Chrome browser. Um, so because because of that reason, I will be using Chrome browser and I will be able to assist you if you are on Chrome browser. So go ahead and open your Chrome browser. You can go any way you want, either one of these ways or whichever the district you, uh, you, know, you work for, they give us you to log in, you go from it, whatever way. But no matter what, sign in with your district account. Um, Whatever account, that, whichever way you go in, this is the screen you should see. 90% of the time, this is the screen you should see unless your district decided that they want to have their own um, you know, screen or something like that, then that's, um, I am, uh, it is not under our control, right? But because you are accessing Microsoft Outlook, I bet Microsoft will have its logo right on that screen. So this is where you're gonna sign in with your district account or your school account. Um, I'd like to ask a uh, pause for a few, um, a few seconds or a minute. Um, are we okay, uh, Melinda? I think we're okay. Um... I don't see any questions in either the chat or the Q&A. Okay. We have a question though um, for the uh, audience. If you, um, we will any one of you be, um, you know, I don't know, anyone, would you be joining along or signing along? I just want to know if that is the case, can someone answer yes, 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 no, 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 or to give me an idea? 
We have a couple of yeses coming in, more than a couple. Very good, thank you. So if you will join with me, please be sure to come back in, you know, um, remember I will be going from the PowerPoint the slides to the uh, the live demo from the live demo back to the slides so I'll be going back and forth and I'm when I get so excited about setting topic I might you know go too fast in that case um, try to slow me down but remember I will not be able to give you a long time for um, every single um, uh, hands-on activity but follow along with me. Persona, um, we have a question. Sure, sure. <laughs> Why does the email setup look different depending on how you sign in? Uh, yes, yes. Um, um, depends on how you actually set up in your account. So, for example, if you go to Outlook.com, then you will see Outlook email first. If you were to go to Office.com, you may not see Outlook first. When, that is an excellent question, and I would like to answer it live within a few minutes. Can you hold okay. on to that question? Yes. Thanks. All right, so let's get to the next slide. The next slide I mentioned is a basic, uh, sorry, a basic tour of the Outlook homepage, right? Why don't we all become a Sherlock home today? And let's take a look at the um, the screen what th that you will see. Those of you who feel like, hey, I don't see what I what you're showing me. In that case, immediately. Those of you who are following, immediately go ahead and click on that arrow that I just pointed to you. That area is known as App Launcher. This is the area where you will find your all the Microsoft Office apps, such as Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, along with your emails. Your emails is known as Outlook. So in case you don't see something like this, go ahead and click on that waffle icon. This is the street language. It's called waffle icon because it's morning in the, it's also in the morning and I will, I am hungry. So let's stick with waffle icon. But the proper term is app launcher because you launch the apps. So you go ahead and click on that to change it to Outlook. Make sure you change it to Outlook so you and I will all be on the same page. Next. If you were to go ahead and find some emails that Melinda sent or Oten sent or somebody from your district sent and you want to find quickly by name, by, by subject line, by topic, by some you know, specific attachment, go ahead and click on that search box and you trust me, it is amazing that all kinds of things that you can find within your Microsoft apps. Next is known as settings. We got to know settings. You got to know where the setting area is. That wheel is known as settings. I'm sure all of you pretty much know what setting area is. Some of you may like pink color um, uh, on the top as a, uh, the theme or the bar right on the top, the blue bar or the pink bar, or you want to change some themes. This is the place you might want to come in and take a look at it. That is the area where you can, um, uh, where you are the captain of your own Outlook it means that you can configure whichever way you want, customize whichever way you want. So take a look at that settings anytime you feel like, hey, I want to change something. Anytime you start to feel that or think about that, that is the area. Next. Every single website, uh, sorry, every yes, website or programs or something that you use, either Microsoft or Google or whatever, the, you, you should always come across with those three dots, the ellipses. The ellipses are, are uh, what it means is that they allow you to have, to, to you, to, to, they offer you more options, things that you may not see. As you can see, I enlarged all these icons for you. So some of the available icons were say put in or put away in that in that um, ellipsis area. So don't say, hey, I can't find this button. You said you you know it's right there. Yes, and when it happens, simply click on those three dots and find out what else is in there. Next. We today, I know most of you pretty much know about deleting and you know uh, replying email this and that, but there are a few things we may 
I personally did not take a look at those things because I always use desktop version, but I am so pleased to know that to find out that Microsoft Outlook also has something called Sweep. We will get to it and you will love it. Um, hopefully you will <laughs> love it. Sweep means you're going to comb through your messages and you're going to put them aside so you can get back to them later on. Next, we will talk about reply all. The reason I want to talk about reply all is basically sometimes we say we want to forward. So we expect the forward button, but then we can find the forward button. So reply all forward button is hidden under the reply all area. But of course, there is another reply all I will explain in a few minutes. You will you will enjoy it, I hope. And this one is um, this area which I just showed is known as the left pane, very similar to OneDrive that those of you who attended would say, hey, I know that it is very similar. Yes, it is Outlook. Remember, this is Outlook. And so it has its own stuff. We all know inbox means how many, you know, your emails that come uh, that come in every day or every few minutes. And drafts folder is something that you are working on and you cannot finish it yet because you need some more information or sometimes you simply forgot and then you never send it. And then people will say, where is that email? Then you are like, I sent it to you. Then you're like, she, they are like, no, you did not. And then you say, uh-oh, it's been sitting in my draft. So sometimes make sure you go ahead and check your draft folder, a drafts folder, and then see whoever, you know, if you need to send or delete. Sent items, all of you know, sent items. This sent item is always a, a, a lifesaver for me. I use the word lifesaver because it saves some most of my life. I mean, it saves my life several times. So the rest of the folders, we will take a look at it in a few minutes. This is, of course, the left pane. This time, whenever you see, let's try on the bottom right, Every time I say, let's try, it is on me. Let's try something at OTEN.US. I just put it right up there just for the sake of decoration itself. And so what it means is we will go live in this workshop to show you whatever we just looked at. And those of you who already looked at together with me, that's wonderful. And um, I'm going to pause for a few minutes, seconds again and ask Melinda if there is anything I need to do. There's one question um, uh, from Literacy SPL. Uh, I do not see the three dots on mine. Anna seemed to also have the same problem, but then she found it. So <laughs> would the more button or the options button, whatever you want to call it, um, does that not appear on some account types? Uh, I, uh, if it is, I can only, you know, say about the organization's uh, account, such okay. as school and districts. If you don't see it, it, may, it could be two things, I believe. One is that your screen is too big enough that it can show everything, all the oh. little icons. Or the second thing is uh, your account or your district may not even allow certain options for you to have. Okay. Okay. So if the screen, if they have a really large screen, if they've got it <laughs> optimized, then there's no yes. need to have an options button because everything's up at the top anyway. That's right. Yes. Okay. Whenever we have ellipses, we usually means ta 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 etc. Right. So it is uh, that etc. is waiting somewhere, hiding somewhere. And so if you don't see it, it could be your screen is too big. One or second, I can uh, imagine that some of the options that may be available. Uh, uh, your district may or may not allow that. But remember, these three dots, it is not only here on the top bar. I, you, you, we are going to take a look at it in a few minutes. A lot of places you're going to see. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share. And um, Melinda, go ahead. I think, I think that's good. I think you got it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, if I can I go ahead and share and can everybody say that are you guys are OK? Um, me going with the next or we're, uh, you need some time to sign in. So everyone type yes if you're ready to move on. Okay, so I'm going to move here. Yes or yeds. Yeah. yeah. Thank, okay. you, Aldo. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So now what I'm sharing is, is the LAUSD um, website screen. Do you all see it? Hopefully. Yes. 
Yes, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in the way I would always sign a um, mailbox because I tend to memorize certain websites. So I, I, am, I have a habit of just typing mailbox.lausd.net and I have my district account. I'm logging in and I am in. As you can see, I go, I, I, I am already in Outlook. First thing, first thing I want to show is the app launcher, the waffle icon that I mentioned up, uh, is located on the top left. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the top left. You have plenty, a lot of apps, um, but today's focus is Microsoft Outlook. So why don't we go ahead and make sure in case you are somewhere else, make sure you click on Outlook and come back to Outlook and you should see your email, your own emails. But here is something about your email. Please do not get lost uh, reading your emails or replying your emails or taking care of your emails at this time. If you wish to organize and manage, let's do it together um, when I get to that topic. For now, please, um, if possible, try to stay with me. So that way we can take a basic tour again, live basic tour again. So here we go. I mentioned the app launcher. I also mentioned the search area where you can go ahead and search anything that you wish to search. Then you, I mentioned the settings, the settings that you, where you can go ahead and configure or change any of your settings that you want to. And even though I did not mention this area, I just want to quickly mention that to you. What it is, is that it is, a, it is an area, it tells you, let me close this. It tells you if I have notifications or not. If I were to click on that notifications, people have clicked liked on certain emails that I sent it. How cool is that? That's a quick way for someone to let them know. I read your email. I like it. Like it doesn't mean what it, you know, it's not like Facebook posts or stuff. It means, yes, I hear your message. I like it. That's fine. You don't have to do it. Just simply close it. Then, I um, here is the area where you can, of course, take, you know, send a message by clicking on it. Let's take a quickly quick look. I did not say it, but I want to share it to you. Toggle left pane. Just watch this area with me. If I were to click on it, I get more space because that left left pane is hidden. Now, if I click on it, I have more space. Uh, sorry, I have all the folders, but less space. So go ahead. The word is toggle. It means you click on it to hide. You click on that same button to reveal it again. Then I mentioned something about the three dots. So those of you who find the three dots, great. If you don't find it, I, the truth to be told, if I cannot see your screen, I will not be able to give you 100% why you don't see it. So. The three dots means I have more stuff. As you can see, I have a lot more stuff. They don't fit anymore on my, on my top bar. So the next one and I mentioned was sweep. We will talk about sweep and, and, and move to and junk when we get to real organization and make a, 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 a real topic area where we are going to mention about organizing and managing stuff, okay? So let's see one thing in here. If you, I would like you to sort of wait. Okay, very good. Let me come back to this page. In here, I mentioned reply all. Where if I were to forward this current email, I have two choices, many choices actually, but we're gonna go stick with this first. The three dots I mentioned is here. I can either reply, reply all or forward. But at the same time, I can also do it on the top. I can either reply all, but this is only one person who sent me. So it doesn't matter whatever I click, either reply or reply all. But if it is only one person, I will simply click reply. But if I were to forward, I will simply click forward. I know you all know how to do these things, but I just want your attention with this, uh, uh, the forward button is hidden, or you can simply go to that three dots and you can go ahead and do whatever it is that you need to do. Either reply, reply all or forward. So I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint to get back to this one organize and manage. 
what I'm about to show will be quite a lot, but please do not feel so um, alarmed. What this is the real meat and potato area. This is absolutely, I really spent a while to, to, to go over it and it is, it's, it's, it fascinates me, that's all, okay? All these things that I'm about to show you, you can do all those things in one minute or less. Because if you learn to right click on anything and everything, you will see these. I know it is quite overwhelming. Trust me, because it says under one minute or less. Those of you who are so anxious to check it out, but of course, try to stay with me because if you don't try to stay with me and you go on your own, I, I am unable to assist you because you will be on your own boat and I will be uh, on my own boat with the rest of the attendees. But we will go over all these things. Those of you who wish to have this screen on with you at all times, please go ahead and take a picture or have it on another screen or whatever it is that you want. This is the area where I will be spending a long time in my email to go over all of these things. I have enough time to go over the so I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to pause again and I see something on Q&A. Okay, so I we only have one Q&A, uh, Melinda, right? That was the, yes, that was the one that you wanted to hold for later. That's correct. So I sort of went over it, what it was. I'm going to go back to my my screen, I went over it a few minutes ago that okay. when you were to click on the app launcher, you if you click on app launcher and make sure you are on Outlook, you should see the same, similar screen as mine. So um, Beverly, is there a, do you find it um, still different or are you okay now? Uh, she can type the answer, right? or not yes, oh, she yes. Yeah. okay okay yes all right so let me take a look at let, let's take a look at it together create new subfolder absolutely we can create it right and clean up your emails i know for sure most of you have been deleting emails right some of you may not have been archiving but most of us we always delete what we don't need right so you know that so that means you already have done it mark as junk and phishing and block the truth to be told i found out we had a, a an issue at our um, school wide um, issue that was there was a uh, some phishing going on and so we i found out that 85 percent of our uh, uh, teachers from my school site or some other school site they couldn't they did not know how to make the emails, uh, you know, junk or phishing or um, uh, uh, block the email. So I will show it to you. If you know it, wonderful. Don't feel, uh, don't worry about it. But those of you who don't know, don't worry. We will take a look at it together. Sweep, move to, we're going to uh, learn about creating, using, and um, clearing the uh, categories. I will explain to you what categories mean in this case. Flag and pin, it may sound so easy for you, but there are certain times they are wonderful tool, um, tools for you to use. Snooze, please remember when you are going to practice on your own later on um, uh, after this workshop, anytime you snood any messages, they go to scheduled folder. It does not call snooze folder. You cannot rename it. It's 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 called scheduled folder because you are snoozing means you're gonna get back to it uh, uh, at a scheduled time or date. Okay. Suggested attachments. We all know how to attach, but this one is different. Suggested attachments. We're gonna take a look at upload and share. Send versus send later. I found out from some of my colleagues, they did not know that little one exists. And I will explain to you why you might want to use that. Reply all, you know, I know how to reply all, but do you know you can reply all by a meeting? What if somebody says something and you need to create a meeting right out of that same email? Absolutely, we can do that and I'll show it to you. Save images, it may be a bit uh, easy to you, but I will explain to you why you, you need to learn that, especially when I deal with the students and I found out that it is very useful um, uh, tool for you to learn as well. 
um, some of you may already have email signatures. Some of you may not even have email signatures. Some of you don't even put your, e your, your, your name at the end of your, your email. Remember, we are teachers and administrators and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, office staff and so on. But let's have our own professional looking email signature. If you have never done it, now is the time. Immersive reader. It may sound like, hey, whatever. I don't know what that is. Trust me, when you are so overwhelmed and you have to read a long email, immersive reader comes in handy. Translator, I do not know whether it will be helpful to you or not, but it is quite helpful for our advisors and teachers at our LAUSD. The reason is we are now online. We are now on, we're now teaching online. So we have students who cannot um, speak or write English. So they write in Spanish or Chinese or some other languages that their desktop, laptop, or their phone allows, right? So when they do that, what happened is they write it in their language. We have no idea what they say or I write in their language and I, sometimes I might want to check it. So in that case, translator comes in handy. Those of you who don't have translator, don't worry. We're gonna get it from get add-ins. Get add-ins can be found under the three dots. I, the question is which three dots? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. So I'm gonna pause again. I like to ask if you wish to chat, uh, write something. Now is the time. And the question is, if you um, would you like to take a picture of it? Now is the time or take a screenshot or follow from another screen. Please go ahead and do that. And if you wish to, um, uh, if you if you have any other questions now, um, you go ahead and ask your question before I get to the real live demo. Are we good? Yes, it looks like yes, yes, yes. Yes. So. I got a, an okay from you all. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop, share, and let's get to my page. Here we go. Back to the Outlook page. I am back to the Outlook page and I like to start with create a new subfolder. Let me tell you about subfolder. Do you notice I have subfolders called Apple, ARVR, LAUSD, My Analytics, O10. I noticed something. Oh, never mind. O10, and then Schoology emails and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven subfolders. These seven subfolders can you can you can also create it. You can also delete it. You can also move it. You can also make it subfolder of the subfolder. So the way to do is the people, uh, the attendees who attended last Tuesday, some of you may have remembered that I like right clicking. I don't like to go and do anything else other than right click. I don't like to move my mouse to anywhere else but right click. So if you were to right click on any of the folders that you have, imagine yourself, hey, I want to create a subfolder, right click. Here is your create new subfolder. So this is under a minute, isn't it? Right click and use subfolder. Of course, my talking was longer than the clicking it, right? So you simply click new subfolder. We're going to call it webinars. So let's imagine I just created a folder called webinars. As you can, you may have noticed that it is alpha in alphabetical order. A, L, M, N, O, right? M, O, S, and W. So it is all in alphabet, uh, it's alphabetized. So it is so neat that you, you can just, you know, see it. So now what if I were to move this webinars folder into O10 folder? So I can either right click and click move, or I can simply drag it and drop it. If you see, you will, you should notice that I'm dragging. How do I know I'm dragging? Because there is a little grayish, dark gray bar uh, box with a tiny little box. It tells me that I'm moving something to something else. So if I were to move it to O10, I am here in O10, I simply release the mouse. Once I release the mouse, I will see a little down arrow telling me there is a sub folder. So you simply click on that subfolder and then 
I have webinars inside that OTAN. That's it. So we did that, right? So I'm, if I don't want it, and sometimes we do make mistakes by putting in the wrong folder. I don't want that webinars to be in OTAN. Instead, I want it to be in inbox. You simply move it again, drop it. That's it. So it becomes a folder under inbox folder. And I'm going to quickly click on the chat just in case if anyone has um, any question. Uh, it's not that you're going to have question in there, but at least something. Um, why do I see two inboxes, one at the top and the other in the middle? And if you see it, it means you may have have you may have either um, have it under the uh, favorites. So sometimes we may have an, a, a, the same folder. It may be under the favorites because I got rid of the favorites. So you may see inbox under your favorites folder or you may simply see it. So don't, it is nothing to um, worry. It is just giving you extra, you know, <laughs> inbox. So it is always syncing, you know, all the time. So don't worry about it. Is that, user, is that possible for Gmail too? That is what we use. Eh? So you can create, you in this um, account in Outlook, I can only have Outlook related accounts. So for example, the top one that you are looking at is my district. The one you are looking at on the bottom is personal. I also have an account called Farzana Kasim account and that account is my personal and I don't really use it. So. This, you should only have one account, which means your district account or your organization or your school. Okay. Uh, how do I, how do you go from one Outlook account to another? If you have more than one, you have to actually, I found, I came across with that question on uh, MicrosoftOffice.com, that office.com that they have a, 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 a search area where it says, how do I merge my personal with my district? So you might want to look into that because today's topic, I am not including that as it, it involves a, a lot of my time. So um so I hope it's okay. Uh, Melinda, you good? We're good, yes. Okay, all right. So now what I want is the next one is clean up your emails. Just to let you know, I'm going from the, um, from the list that I showed you uh, on my PowerPoint, right? Clean up of your, your, your emails, no problem. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at it. Shutterstock, I don't need this. I can simply click on delete. Remember my right click, right click, Delete. I have two choices. I can I I have several choices, but I'm trying to do a cleanup. I just want to delete it, but I still want to. Uh, if I want to delete, I simply delete. But then I I feel like you know what? I want to see if they have any kind of coupons or something that I can use. I might archive it so I can go back later on and I can go back and see it. Once I click archive, it will go to my archive folder, which I have to find it. Here is archive folder, which just I just archived Shutterstock in front of you, right? So that's it. That's how you can do. Let's go back to my inbox and let's delete something. Every I do not need to um, uh, uh, um, archive it. I simply want to delete. You can simply click on it. I don't even want to move my mouse. Right click, delete. Isn't it under one minute? Absolutely, right? Now the one on the um, because these are always, these are quick and fast. So I'm going, okay, I'm going moving. And in case you feel like I didn't get it, what you just said, now is the time you can uh, put it, you put your question in your Q and A section. So that way Oten can, uh, uh, Melinda can assist you. Um, I will not be, I will not be, um, what do you call it? I will not be uh, uh, um, checking the chat anymore uh, as I want to continue with the rest of the uh, topics on the, on my PowerPoint. Mark as junk, phishing, or block. Let's take a look at something, okay? So let's say Nepris. There is a company called Nepris or something, um, AdSearch. I don't want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of, let's say I have a company called Nepris, a website um, that I no longer want to use it. I don't want to read it anymore. I just want to make it junk. You have several choices. You can either go up on the top Select the file, the email that you want. How do I know I select it? Because there is a blue background. You simply click junk, 
and then you have a choice of junk or phishing or block. But if I want to block such a, a, a person, you can simply use it. I'm not really blocking anybody. I'm just simply making it as a junk because I want this Nepris email to go to junk. So I can simply click junk or as you know, I like right clicking and then I'm gonna go ahead and if I can find junk, I should be able to find junk. This time I cannot even find junk. So this right click method for junk is not gonna work. So it's gonna be on the top, you click junk. And it's gonna say, do you want to send a copy of this message to Microsoft to help improve the accuracy of the junk email filter? What it means in this case is that junk, Microsoft is going to remember, um, you know, any, Okay, I believe we are experiencing technical difficulties. Melinda, I am back. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> we lost you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You left I... and came back really quick. So <laughs> thank um, God. Yes. So uh, not to worry. Um, you're here, and if that does happen again, just come back. We'll wait for you. Okay. We okay. lost part of what you were saying there, and then you seem to leave. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm going to share the screen again. Do you see report as junk screen? Okay, and Eric says he found it. Right click and go to the more option, you will find junk. Okay, oh, what go to the move option and you'll find junk. I'm sorry. Everybody. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to go back, go to, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on move and then um, I don't see junk in here, so I cannot. Unless you go to a different folder, yes, move to a different folder, then you may be able, well, even then, then you have to go a long way, right? As you can see how many clicks I need to do. So my right click method is not going to work at this time. So in that case, you simply select whatever it is that you don't want. You can either select the circle or simply be inside that email. Simply click on junk, click junk. And you can say, no, don't report, don't, don't, you know, you decide here. Don't show this message again if you, if you want uh, Microsoft to take care of it for you in the future. But I still want to, you know, decide. So I'm going to just simply say report. So I just did that. Right. So now Rocket Book Company is going to be, be now known as a junk. So you simply in case you feel like, uh oh, I did wrong. So you simply go to junk email and then you can go ahead and bring it back. Uh oh, this email should not be in junk, by the way. I need this email in my inbox. Somehow Microsoft decided this is a junk. Due to that reason, what I would do is I will simply it's not on my top topic because I just found out and this is a perfect time for me to show it to you. Simply drag and drop it into inbox. That tells the Microsoft in the future when you see it, don't go, don't, don't put it in the junk. So Microsoft will know now not to put it. But of course, it was sent a few days ago or weeks ago. So I have to go comb through it. Oh, it's here. It was sent at 9.25 AM today. So now it is in my inbox because I know it says inbox. As you can see on the top over here, somebody just sent an email. I believe it was from. I cannot find it anymore. It just disappeared. It means I just received an email. <laughs> the little email right up there, it says launch lunch with um, Larek today. So the new email came up right there. You saw it, but that's no big deal. You all see it all the time. Persona, there's a yes. question. Um, is there a way to have emails that you want be sent to a specific folder? Like they're yes. not junk, but they're coming from, let's say, Schoology, and mm -hmm. you want them to go to a special Schoology folder that you created. That's right. That is my, that is a one perfect um, segue that I am heading to that now. Let's take a look at something. Did ha this has to do with um, Larek, right? The com uh, uh, Larek, we, uh, we, we, I have to do something. What it is, is that if, if you, 
No, I'm not going to pick on LARAC today. I'm going to pick on LAUSD. Let's take a look at it. Every every Friday, I believe it was no Friday or Sunday, I receive an email from LAUSD saying what to expect for Monday uh, broadcast. So, for example, if I were to go ahead and see anything to do with LAUSD from my list, okay, I'm looking through my email, and then you are suddenly like you, you feel like anything to do with LAUSD, I want to see what's happening. And I don't want that LAUSD to be on my, um, you know, on with my the rest of my email. So what you do is you simply go ahead and find that email that you want. I, I want to find it because it is it that one really tells me wonderful way that I can show it to you. Um, because Oten doesn't send me much. Oten send me once in a while, right, oh, Melinda? Oh, he's up towards the top. Did you see that? Oh. I did. I saw it. It was up towards the top, like the fifth okay. or sixth down. Really? Fifth? There you oh, go. This one. Okay. So anything to do with LAUSD or anything to do with LAUSD instructional tag, I can go ahead and I can go ahead and uh, put move it. Okay, so you have there. Are, I found out that there, there are several ways, but basically is this: you right click on it and you say that I want to move it, but you don't have a folder that you want to move it to, because it has to do with LAUSD, and so you don't want to. You you have no folder created. So you can either create a folder right now, or I already showed you how to create a subfolder, right? So you can have it ahead of time. So let's say I have a new folder. So I will, I will create a new folder, something called LAUSD. Once I have it, and I'm going to tell, uh, I'm going to press enter, and now that email is sent to LAUSD. And I have to find it. There is a problem every time Microsoft, every time I do that, Microsoft send that subfolder to the bottom. So those of you who are following me, in case you don't see that LAUSD, I mean, sorry, whatever folder that you created on the top list, you need to come down here. What it means is we created the subfolder through the email from the email, not from the subfolder here not from here. If you were to create a new subfolder, let's create a whole new brand new subfolder called LAREC. Anything to do with LAREC, you want to put it and LAREC will sh be shown here on this list. But when we were looking at LARIC, uh, another email, we, cre we moved that particular email when we couldn't find the folder, we went to the new folder, okay? So in case you look, go through this route, make sure you come down here on the left side and you drag it up to your inbox folder. Just, that's it, just like that. So now I have my LAUSD folder and LARIC folder. I, if you go to LARIC folder, I created it right through the subfolder. So if I were to go back to my inbox and Larek is here, I have a folder, but I have not moved this email to here yet. The way to do is, many ways to do, but the way I would like to do is called sweep. This is a, 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 something that I, I want you to, guys, if you're following, to do it. You go ahead and click on the email that you want and you click sweep. When you sweep, it says anything from Michelle. I cannot pronounce, so I'll just leave it. <laughs> um, so it says move all messages from the inbox folder. Anything to do with Michelle will be moved or move all messages from the inbox folder and any future messages. Ah, because I know Larek is gonna send me more emails in the future. If I were to do this in the future, next Friday or something, if Michelle sent, sent that email, it will still be sitting in the inbox, not in my Larek folder. So due to that reason, I want future to be sent to this Larek folder that Okay, Farzana, you're you're frozen. So if you can hear me, you might be coming back. <laughs> it looks like you did. Okay, you were frozen. It's okay. Don't worry about it. This happens, folks. This happens all the time. 
Farzana, you are muted. Um, I've yes. never been in a webinar to this day, and we've been doing this since March, even before that. So I've never been in a webinar where something goofy didn't happen like that. So, so we just so, power so on. sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, I have no idea what is happening. My, no one is using the, 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 the internet here. I specifically said nobody uses email. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little, I, I tell you what, why don't you uh, turn off your video? That might uh, yes. save you some bandwidth, okay? Let's do that. There oh. we go. Okay. So um, I don't know up to where you guys were, but um, I believe I was showing the uh, move messages. Yes. Is and it any okay. future messages. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. To any future messages. And then, of course, you can decide the rest of them because this time I am trying to put a certain email or a certain um, a person's email to this particular folder called Larek. So now I will simply move it and now don't click OK yet because it's going it's going to go to deleted items. Remember, you are moving to Larek. So you simply click OK. But this time it's going to say success. All future messages from the sender you specified will be moved. We are working on cleaning up your mailbox. Don't worry about it. Just simply click OK. So what it is doing now is it's going to go through my Larek. Everything to do with Michelle. As you can see, when I click on Larek, everything to do with Michelle from 2019 all the way to this morning at 9 to 49 are all in here. If Michelle were to send me at 1 p.m. today, here is a question to you guys. If you wish, click on the chat. I mean, uh, type it in the chat. At 1 p.m., Michelle, Michelle Style is going to send me an email. Where do you think it's going to go to? In her folder, that's right. Her folder is Larek folder. What if I were to change the Larek folder to another name? Simply right click and rename and I'm going to call it M-I-C-H-E-L-E. I think it's double E, I do not know. I have to check it. And that's it, right? So now that's how you can do it. That is sweeping and moving the files, I mean, the emails from your inbox to Michelle or Larek. If I went, want to change the name again, simply right click, rename, and I'm going to call it Larek. And here we go. Oh, I think I spelled it wrong. I sure did. Okay, that's how you can do it. All right. So can you repeat how to use the sweep? No problem. The rest of the uh, things are very fast, so I can definitely take some time for you. So basically, let's take a look at inbox again. I'm going to go ahead and do the another 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 um, example. Let's take a look at something in my on my list. Let's take a look at something called um, Ed Search. Ed Surge K12, anything to do with Ed Surge K12. So I simply click on the email first. You need to let the computer know what is it that you want. The first rule is you click on the email that you want to sweep. The second thing is you simply click on the button called sweep on the top. Once you click sweep on the top, make sure to you, you, you read it for messages from Ed Surge email that company you want to move it to, <laughs> Melinda says, sweep me. <laughs> I was trying to give you a test message. I came a little late. That's a good one. <laughs> move all messages from the inbox folder, because remember, we want to move Ed Search in the future too. Whatever future messages Ed Search sends me, I want to move it to a folder. But in this case, remember, I have not created Ed Search folder yet. So don't worry about it. You simply go to move to area, click on it. You can go down to new folder. You type in the name of that company, which is Ed search k12 once you have it press enter i am now going to move anything to do with ed search to to this uh, to this folder called ed search once i click okay it will say success 
It is moving. Something is happening. Click OK. And like I told you before, you will not find ad search here because I never created that ad search folder over here. I created within the email. Therefore, I have to go down, just scroll down. You will see your folder, simply drag it up. Just drag it up all the way to inbox. That means ad search will become one of the folders. And here it is, ad search, anything to do with ad search is here. Isn't it cool, everyone? Can somebody give me a, some kind of high Very five or cool. a yes Two or something? Up. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So this is how you can um, identify. <laughs> that is one thing that I, I seriously wanted you guys to do. Next, I want you to learn something is this categories. Categories, simply, don't worry too much. You just simply click what is it that you want. By the way, Carl Bedo is my principal. Anything to do with Carl Bedo, for example, I like to create, I like to categorize it. I like to put it aside. So in that case, I will simply click on it, click on the email that you want. You go to category, uh, sorry, click on categorize. As you can see, I already have categories that I created for the central office and so on and so forth. For Zana means sometimes I send email to myself. So in anything to do with my email and then uh, other things that I it's needed. Here it is, new category. You click on category, you decide whatever uh, color that you wish to. I selected this color and I'm going to call it principal. Click save. Once I click save, anything to do with Mr. Carl Bedo, as you can see, principal. It says there, right there, it says principal. It tells me this is the principal's category I'm looking at. Now, if I were to, if I were to, um, uh, not here. So this is how you can do, but again, it is not sweeping. We're not sweeping anything in here. We're just categorizing, okay? So we are just categorizing. This person is my SAA. You don't need to do it in here, the truth to be told. I like to use the categorized categories, category, uh, sorry, categories um, in calendar. When I get to calendar, I want, if for any reason I forget, I want you guys to remind me, okay? All right, so I'm not gonna uh, dwell on that too much, but basically you click new category, choose a color you want, you go ahead and make the email as whatever it is that you want to. Play with it, please, all right? Um, somebody said got cut off. Am I okay or am I not okay? You're you're okay here. Uh, we do have a question. Oh, um, okay. Do uh, why? Let's see. Can't you just do a search of your general email inbox and uh, to produce an equivalent list of emails from the designated sender? Absolutely, but that means I'm not. Yeah, you can go through it. Definitely, I would just say now uh, anything to do with Cbedo. They will always pop up, everything to do with it. It's a long way to go, <laughs> right? So you can do one. Yeah, that's a lot because my principal is pretty much CC'd under, you know, whenever uh, email I send, that's a searching. You're searching a specific email, specific attachment. You're searching specific something. But categories is something that you are categorizing. Okay, this is the person. And you know, there are people a lot of time we want to organize, but for me, categories is not categorizing it in my email is no big deal to me. But um, uh, having folders is imp important so to me. If I could yeah. just for a second, so a category um, or categorization, if you have your principal sending you emails about technology and your principal is sending you emails about um, the staff meetings, you would want to categorize the tech ones and maybe not categorize the staff this, meetings just because you want those to stand out. Yes, that's right. That's okay. right. That is the reason my first step I mentioned to you was select the email that you want to not every Carl Bedo, but the email to do with it. So if you look at this subject line, it has nothing to do with staff meeting. It has to do with best buy purchase, right? So that is how it is. So this is what we connect. We need to, um, you can categorize in that way. Yes. All right. Are we good? Yes. Okay. Um, quickly, it, it should be all under one minute for now. So I'm going to say Melinda Holt. Anything to do with Melinda Holt, I want it pinned. 
You simply go to Melinda Hall's email. There is a little push pin. You simply click on it. It means every single day until I unpin it, Melinda Holt's email will be there. So the question is this, why would you want to, um, why, why would you want to pin somebody? It is some, sometimes on a day, for example, if it is on a day, you feel like, you know what, this email, I got to get to this email. This email is so important. I need to get to it, but I not at this time. I'm going to pin it. So I simply pin it, and then it will always be there until I unpin it. Okay, so flag, for example, I'm going to say I need uh, I need to follow up something on this, especially Mr. Bedos here. This email, I need to follow up. I simply click on the flag. That's it. This flag will be there. And when I want to search, I simply go to filter and flag. All the items that are flagged will show up here. As you can see, I have flagged OTAN, anything to do with OTAN at this time, because I am giving workshops, right? I need to have things ready for me. That's how. Whenever you are ready and done, you simply close the X, come back to your inbox, and you are back to it. This is your area where you can do filter. If you want to see just the unread, simply look at the unread. Anything to do with unread will be here. All right? Snooze. Let's snooze somebody. Seriously, I need to snooze somebody. I have no idea which one I should snooze. Let's go ahead and snooze Burlington English because I'm interested in something about Burlington English. I can simply click on this email that you want. Don't forget that. Don't snooze something else that you don't want to. Make sure you select what is it that you want to snooze. You click snooze button on the top. You have a choice of today, this evening, tomorrow, this weekend. You feel like, nope, none of those days. I want my own day. You go ahead and say, this Sunday at 8 o'clock, no way I'm waking up at 8 a.m. on Sunday. I might take a look at it around 9 p.m. because Monday is approaching very soon, within a few hours for me uh, that day. So I will simply click save. Once I do that, I snoozed Burlington English email. Therefore, it will be under scheduled. As you can see, it is now under scheduled and here is Burlington English that I just snoozed in front of you. Okay, since I don't see any QA or any chat, chat and, and if, if you don't think that I'm going too fast, I will head to the next topic. Are we good? How do I pin? You simply select your email, whatever the email that you want to pin. Let's just say you want to select any email that you want, and you should see that little pin button right there. It's a push pin. How do you and you click, oh, unpin. Unpin is same button. Go back to that on the top, way on the top. You simply click on that same button, and it becomes unpinned. So I have a question for you guys. You can just yes, yes or no. Do I have any any email pinned right now? No. Good, that's right. <laughs> I have nothing pinned. I have now one, one item pinned because I just pinned Melinda's email, right? So that's what it is. Very good. So I am going to head to the next one if you don't mind or uh, uh, should I just pause I think again? we're good. Go ahead. We're good. Why don't we do something here? Why don't I create a new message and I'm going to send Melinda. Here is the Melinda. Um, and then I'm going to say something. Testing. Be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say. We're recording. <laughs> oh, that's true. Howdy. If I can spell it. Then I'm ready. Okay. But I don't want to send Melinda yet because Melinda is doing her OTEN webinar right now with someone called Frizana. And I want to send her later. This is, this is the time, folk. If you don't learn anything else and everything else from me, I seriously wish that you will learn something, at least this, to take it home. What it is is this. I don't want to send Melinda yet because I don't want to interrupt her her webinar and checking email and all. I click on send later. Computer is suggesting you want to send her on the 6th Friday at 8 a.m. I said, mm, the 6th is good. 6th is good. 
but I want to send her on the 9th, Monday at 9 a.m. Okay, not Friday, not Saturday, not Sunday, but 9 a.m. 9th at 9 a.m. I am ready. Sorry, Melinda, you'll be getting howdy from me on Monday the 9th at 9 a.m. You click send, and then you're going to be like wondering, oh, are you sure? Did she get receive? Did she receive it? What will happen? So don't worry too much about it. You can simply go and ask her if she, you know, if, if, if she has received it or not. So that is something that you might want to see. But that what will happen is on uh, Monday morning at 9 a.m., Melinda email, the email that I sent to her, not this email, the Melinda that I sent to Melinda at 9 a.m. will pop up on your sent items. I would, I don't mind um, repeating it. I would definitely repeat it. And just in case I will t run out of time. And what I would like you to know is that um, uh, the rest of the things that I have it on my PowerPoint and you should definitely be able to follow when you receive my PowerPoint uh, with those little keywords that I have. So remember my right click, remember my top bars, remember my the three, three ellipses that I mentioned, you can play through it, uh, but, you know, use, use those things to play through those items that I mentioned in there. And I'm sure I would um, uh, lose some time. So Please run through that again quickly. So we'll do that. What it is, is that I go to new message. I'm going to send Melinda again. Sorry, Melinda, you started it. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to call this one um, um, uh, testing two. Okay. Um, folks, just to let you know, if I put three dots, it means it's me. And if I don't put three dots, it means somebody else is sending it. That's how I identify myself as. So I'm going to say, how are you? And then whatever it is that I want to say, and then I'm going to simply click on send, not the send button. Please remember, I am clicking on the bottom, the down arrow button where it says send later. When I click send later today, I'm going to stick with the uh, today's date because I want immediately, I want Melinda to get it. Maybe at 10... 15 a.m. Okay. Don't make it too early. 10, well, 10:15 <laughs> is in one minute. That's okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'm gonna make it 18 a.m. So I click send at 10:18 in five minutes. Melinda will receive my email, and I will simply click send. So she should receive it, and hopefully she replies back to me before you guys all leave at 10:30. Okay, so something like that. That that's it. That's how you do that. Okay, so you simply click on send later. Are we good? We are. We have a question. Uh, what reference sources do you use to research and remember all of these wonderful skills that you are teaching us? <laughs> um, for me, I see it as a, everything that I do is I I feel like that um, every tools that the company is giving me, I don't want to lose them. So I simply click and I repeat everything that I see. I just simply learn those keywords. I repeat them. Oh, what is this keywords? What does that mean? Send later. I just click on those. I repeat it. I check it. I, you know, cross check it, whatever it is. And then until I really master it. So basically the point is I master the skills by doing it again and again. As we always tell our students, practice, practice, practice makes perfect, right? So that's what it is. Anytime you feel like confused, what does this mean, junk? I want to click on it, click on it. No need to go to Google or anything. Simply click on it and repeat the steps. That's how I do that. I don't memorize anything. Just let it, you know, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Are you good? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, let's go to the next one. Reply all by meeting. I'm going to quickly go to this one. Um, if you don't mind, what it is, is this. Wonderful, by the way, is this. Let's say Melinda sent me an email telling me, Farzana, you did not answer the, um, you, didn't, you didn't fill out the form correctly, and I really need you to reply it ASAP, or uh, meet with, can you meet with me on Monday or something? She says something in the email. Let's say this email. Then I can click on the three dots. Remember the three dots? Right click, just right there in that three dots. If you click on it, make sure you are in the email. Make sure you are in the email that you want to do something. You are in the email, you click on the three dots and you click 
other reply actions. This is my a newly found, newly found a uh, tool, and I am in love with it. Let's say Melinda is telling me, just I just told you, I'm going to click reply all by meeting. What it means is Melinda told me in her email, Monday, can you meet with me on Monday? So since she's telling me and I have some Monday open and I want to tell her, let's do something. I am giving her a meeting right there and there. I'm sending her, telling her, let's schedule the time. When did she say Monday? Monday is the ninth. What time? I have, according to this, this I am available between 12 and 12.30 p.m. Computer already is checking Rosanna, up my- we don't see what you're looking at right now. No, no, no. No, Why no, not? no. Because you're not sharing your screen. You're sharing the oh, app. Oh, I see. That's true. Okay, here we go. I'm back again to this email message. How about now? Can you see my screen? My email? Did I lose you guys again? We see the email. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> My bad. I, yeah, yeah. This I am. I'm behind it now. You're not behind. Uh, You're doing fine. Slow down. You're okay. Good, good. So we can. So make sure you you are in um the email that you want to create a, what do you call it? Create a meeting, right? Because I want to meet with Melinda on Monday. So I will simply click on the email itself. I go to the three dots. You click other reply actions and you simply click reply all by meeting because I'm setting up an appointment with Melinda so we can meet on Monday. That's how good. Cool it now is. we Don't see the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so then here it is, the calendar. And so I am I've decided to meet with Melinda on the ninth. And I can decide what time to what time if you have anything open. And so let's say Friday, I can show you something Friday. I have something, I have something, I've, I have something scheduled 11 to 12 and then I have one to something. So, but between 12 and one, I am available. You see, it says you are available. How cool is that? It is helping me out. So I can say, you know what? I'm gonna meet with Melinda on the 6th. Uh, 11, 12 to 12 30 p.m. I'm okay now. Once I'm done with it, you do whatever else you need to, you know, create your calendar. Those of you, if in case I do not get to the calendar section, this is it. This is it. You are in the calendar calendar already. Okay. So you can decide what is it that you want, what time, what date, and everything. Who else you want to put? Once I'm ready. Sorry, Melinda. I'm going to be sending you again. Just delete. So it's I will okay. simply click the uh, send. So once I click send, Melinda will have will receive um, a, an email calendar requesting her, uh, you know, uh, whether she wants to attend that meeting at 11 or uh, sorry, 12 o'clock on Friday tomorrow. So, yep. Yes, I just got it. <laughs> That's right. So if she if she uh, if she attends if she wants she can click um you I know did. RSVP. So she, she says she just did. So let's take a look at my calendar quickly. Even though it is not about calendar section, but I still want to show it to you. Twelve to twelve p.m. Um, where is it? Oh, here I'm on the six. Here it says, you see, sweep me. That was Melinda's email. I gave her thirty minutes appointment. So I can see, I can meet with her. So within the email, I created a whole calendar just to talk about it, right? Okay. So and that Persona, is something. You, mm -hmm. you opened up a Pandora's box. They all want to <laughs> see that again. At least a few <laughs> of them do. We've got a few requests. So could you do that one more time, please? Just the main steps. How to um, set up. It's okay. We have time. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So uh, let's see here. Melinda sent me an email this morning with you in front of you guys at 9.59 a.m. As you can see, she said test email to sweep, but I am asking you guys, just make sure that you select the email or the person that you want to send a calendar item. You want to set up an appointment with her or with him, whoever, right? You simply click on the three dots. Then you go to other reply actions. Then you simply click on reply all by meeting. If you want, take a screenshot right now, and that's about it. 
That's this is the key area. This means I am replying to her email by giving her an appointment along the way. Once I click on it, I am in the calendar now. I am in the calendar. In that calendar, the title of that email that she sent me was Sweep Me. All I'm going to have to do is decide when I want to meet with her, whether she wants it or not. She will decide when she, whether she wants it or not, but I will provide a time for her. So I'm going to tell her, let's make it Saturday on November 7th. I want to meet with her at one o'clock. Definitely she will say no to me, but I will simply send it to her anyway, right? So you do that, you just select, just pretty much everything is right there. The date, the time, the person I'm sending, the subject that I am sending it about, and do I need to repeat or not, blah, blah, blah. Any other email messages you want to say, say it. Then you simply click send, that's it. And unfortunately, Melinda will get another one again. So that's about it. Can I, uh, are we good? Or did I, I think answer we're good. your question? I think we're good. And I did right. reply um, to the <laughs> message that you sent before. And I am RSVPing to the second invite as a no. No, you see? So, so you this one. To Cool. This one is 1020 AM, the one I sent to her with the send later. This is mm -hmm. so cool, right? The one I sent it with in front of you guys, I click send later. It was 1020 AM and she received it at 1020 AM and she said, I'm fine. Thank you. You see that? I do not ever have to worry anymore about sending it to her. So whenever you have a vacation coming up or something like that, and you want to, you know, some, I don't know, you might want to send an email but you don't want them to know that you are on Thanksgiving vacation on Sunday, Monday morning on the 20 something, you know, we are off the whole week. So you might want to think about send later. Don't send it now, but send later and just get out of there, right? So Melinda declined my uh, request for a Saturday meeting. And the first one she accepted, it says that right there here, it says accepted. Here it says declined. And I just got another one email and they asked me, they are sending the cancel. This is somebody else's email asking me, hey, we don't have any more ITTA weekly. So if I were to go to my calendar, on Friday the 6th, I was supposed to have an email, a meeting at 11 o'clock. Now it is canceled. The owner of this attend, sorry, the host um, had decided to cancel it. I don't have to attend it anymore. So that's it. Cool. I don't have, I'm free now. So I can bug Melinda more at since one, 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go back here quickly to um, if I can find some kind of a email or something or a message somewhere with an image, some kind of image. Let's look for some kind of image here, show blog content. So there is an image, save images. You like something in, in an email and you want to save it, simply right click, remember my method, right click, save images, save it, whatever it is that you want, click on desktop, downloads, whatever. His name is Aaron something, and this is it. So sometimes you might want to save a picture. No, no, no need to get out to do anything. If you like something in here, you simply select, right click, save images, and voila, your image will be saved. That's pretty much it. So it is under one minute, right, you guys? I hope somebody can say yes or no, because it's just that I repeated a few more times. So. Okay, set up and insert email signature. I would really suggest I am due to the uh, very uh, short time limit. Do not worry on my PowerPoint at the end of my workshop here on my PowerPoint point, I will either create a short video to show you the steps on how to create and set up an, um, uh, 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 an insert email signature. Um, if that is okay, um, mm -hmm. Yes, okay. If that is okay, I would like to cover a couple of things that you miss, you may really like. One is this. For example, this person sent me an email. I don't have time to read anything about this, this particular message, but I want someone to read it for me. So what you have to do is you go to the three dots and you're gonna have to go ahead and find, actually, I don't find it in here. Is it because? 
of this person or this because of this person. I'm supposed to find it. Do you have to select the text? I know you don't have to. It's called oh. immersive readers. Yeah. I'm supposed to, I, it's always there. It's always there whenever I ask for it. I uh, yeah 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 yeah. All right. Advanced? It's 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 always these three dots. Okay, let me try something. Let me click reply. No, I'm not supposed to be even here. It's supposed to be. It's just show up. So immersive reader. In case it's not there, we can try this. I'm gonna skip that immersive reader. But I will. I could come back. But what I want to do is get add-ins. Get add-ins is it can be found anywhere, pretty much anywhere. So you click get add-ins. How? You can go to the three dots over here on the bottom where it says get add-ins. Let's find out immersive if it is there or not. I'm very curious. It was there last night. Hmm. It seriously bothered. Oh, immersive. Oh my God. I it, Seriously, those of you, if you can find your immersive somewhere, let me know. I wonder what happened to my Fursana, immersive. We don't have it on ours either. Um, the mm, OTAN, okay. we also have a, a district email, SCOE. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have it either. And we okay. used to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what happened. There might have been an update and our Why? network administrators just haven't clicked the button yet. To push okay, so that's wonderful. Actually, uh, thank God it's not only me, thank God. So those of you who are curious like me, please remember the, two, the term immersive reader, find out about it and you can either right click in, within the message or if not click on one of those three dots, you should find it in there. It will say right above translator. It should always be right above translator and you will see it. So for example, if I were to click on um, if I were to click on OTAN email and three dots, and if I click on translator, you will notice translator will translate it. This email by OTAN will be translated to Spanish version, I mean language, right there and right there. As you can see, I have all in here, it says, hi, Farzana Kasim, hola. Zana Kasim and everything. So this is something you may or may not use, but you might want to teach your students or those people who cannot use, uh, who cannot read in English. Please help them out by telling them, click on the three dots, click on translator. In case you don't see the translator, remember, go to get add-ins add and you can go ahead and type in translator. And if you type translator, you should see translator for Outlook. This is the one I edit. And that is the reason I'm able to get it. If you cannot get it, just come to get add-ins. You are trying to add something else in, okay? One last thing I want to show because it is time is this. It's called, let me go back to get add-ins. It is called Insights, I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S. -S. Insight is a, one of the most amazing thing um, I came across with. Please don't do that to me again. Here, Insights. Those of you who are following and wanting to lo look at it on your own uh, after this workshop, please take a look at it, screenshot it, whatever it is that you want. It is known as insights. This insight is so cool. If I click add, what it does is this. You send out an email to a group of your teachers, a group of your um, whoever that you sent out to. So let's say I sent out an email on every Sunday night or Monday or something I would send this week, I will send out an email to someone let's start with um, tech office hours i usually send out this email okay this email i was i sent it out and let them know this is the time and date that i'm available and anytime i want to see how many perc what percentage people have opened as you can see i have these people plus 64 others people i sent out and if i were to click on that email and three dots and insights i can find out 80 58 percent of people opened it oh what happened to my 42 percent that means they don't even care about that email that i sent it to you to them 
So it says recipient spent an average of 10 seconds reading this email. So I think it is so cool because sometimes I need to track who read my email or not. In that case, you might want to look at it. It is known as insights, it tells you. And then it also take a look at your dashboard. You can take a look at your dashboard and it tells you that how well you are doing it. So I have 92 collaborators and then here it says distracted by email and it says here during working hours I read over three quarters of my emails within 30 minutes of receiving them so rest assured I will always read your email isn't it cool that should be it because and it is 10 30. Wait 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 does it also tell you which of your recipients opened no. your email? No because here no. it says learn why you can't track who reads. It has to do with privacy. Exactly. And, and that's the short answer. <laughs> that's the short answer. But remember, it, you have to have five or more recipients for you to get this insights. Okay? Okay. Uh, All and right. Prasanna, we found Immersive Reader. Uh, thanks to uh, Elizabeth Diamond. Look in the ellipses, the three oh. dots next to the snooze. So open, go to an email. Yes, I want, hold on, let me, it wasn't supposed to be there, it was always I know, <laughs> they moved it, they moved it, so next to your snooze button, there's the three ellipses, and you should see immersive uh, Show an immersive yeah. reader, okay, here we go, oh, I swear, May, was not one of that, okay, so as you can see, this is the immersive reader, and if I were to turn on play, so I can work on some other, you know, ap application, and while it is, while, while it reads it for me. Help. If you can, you need you the go. student information. You see that? You heard that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can. So if you have a big, you know, um, a huge, um, a, I don't know, paragraphs or stuff like that that you want to read, that's it. You can take. You can look at it. That's about it. Um, can you? Okay. So this is ten thirty three. The class ends at ten thirty, right, Miss? Yes. Uh, the workshop ends at Melinda. And um, I understand that. Um, Outlook, I spent more time on Outlook email itself instead of calendar and also people do not worry too much. Again, I, 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 I promise to give you step by step, either step by step or point you to the, the, the uh, good sources where you can learn more about your calendars. Do you like this workshop? And, and, and I would definitely do the part two. And, and seriously, Melinda, I don't mind splitting into part, you know, different uh, things. I mean, seriously, if you are, if you all are interested in, definitely we can do that. All right, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you all for attending. Please fill out that evaluation and we'll see you all sometime soon. Sometime soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.